with a yo ho ho it's tail of the toe so welcome back to let's play in azuma 11 3 team ogre attacks last episode we completed fuji forest but here we found both diamond dust and prominence not only that but they seem to be evil with no real recollection of the fact they were ever in fire dragon they still seem to hate Ryman, as they're calling us, rather than Inazuma National, and they want to take us down. So this is a curious thing that was added into Team Ogre Attacks, and I'm taking on Diamond Dust first because I let's played Inazuma 11 2 Firestorm, so I've shown off the prominence match in full, and I don't really need to do that again. But Diamond Dust is a team I've never fought on this channel, despite me facing half of them when I did the Chaos match. We even do the match on the Genesis grounds. So I want to show at least a good portion of the match against Diamond Dust with Xavier right up front here in this episode of Team Over Attacks. Certainly not Lightning Bolt or Bomb Blast because Fuji Forest in general is not even there. Then depending on how long it takes me to beat both Diamond Dust and Prominence even though I don't plan on showing much of prominence, we will see if I've got time to go to the Alias Academy HQ, because that has also been unlocked, despite it, in the present day, being destroyed. That doesn't make sense, but indeed you'll notice when you get there, it's as though nothing ever happened. Just like this team, who are acting, and, and you know, like they still hate us. So, clearly, they've got special tactics. Go on, so show me what you've got. They've got fast forward, which makes the battle clock run faster. Thanks! I'm glad I didn't try to, you know, stand in the way of that. I would rather the in-game clock move faster. But yeah, so, it definitely makes sense for this to be a team over attacks exclusive, because that's the only game with time travel involved in the Inazuma 11-3 trilogy. You know, there's no Cannon Evans or Team Ogre attacks in Lightning Bolt or Bomb Blast, but here in the Fuji Forest, we seem to have found some kind of adverse effects of all this time travel business because two old alias teams are baying for blood. This isn't even part of an extra competition route match. You, It's just an exhibition match on the overworld. You'll just get some experience for beating it and that's about it. There's no tangible benefits, really, apart from maybe some good random drops. But, again, I want to show it because, you know, Diamond Dust, they're cool. And I've never fought them before. And, of course, now, <laughs> back when I did the Inazuma 2 Let's Play, I could only talk about the teams within the context of that game. But now that we know these guys are actually Korean, they're not Japanese at all, you can talk all about how they were on Fire Dragon on a team with Aphrodite. It's all very cool indeed, and indeed, I in the last episode, I used the Chaos Break right in front of them, but with Axel and Sean instead. I do have Aphrodite on the pitch somewhere, but what with them being related, but he hasn't actually had a touch on the ball yet. But <laughs> never mind. I When I said several episodes ago that I wish Fire Dragon got onto the got into the FFI finals alongside Inazuma Japan, so many commenters agree with me because now now you know what the European lineup is. It is England, Italy, Spain, France, and Germany. That's five European teams. Plus we've got two teams representing the Americas within our own group, the USA and Argentina. And yet there's only one Asian team and Fire Dragon have to miss out when clearly they have the quality to be in the FFI Finals. And they should be, but they're not. Instead, they've been sent back in time to back when they used to be evil and <laughs> trying to take down Inazuma National. But anyway, so because I'm going to show off Alias Academy HQ within this episode, I'm only going to show the first half of the Diamond Dust match, unless something important happens in the second half. But 
Although prominence is my preference between the two teams, it's definitely nice to see Diamond Dust. Team Ogre Attacks does not do version exclusives. You could even recruit both Hector Helio and... Um, oh, nice one. Jordan scored Hector Helio and Paolo Bianchi in the after game. And it's got all of Firestorm and Blizzard's exclusives as well, including Cannon Evans and Scion Blaze. But anyway, that's half time, so I'm going to body Diamond Dust in the second half now. This counts as something important happening. Oh no, I'm going to use the Fiend Hand though, that's my brand new move. Here is Northern Impact. Now this is for you, commenter, who I can't remember the name of off the top of my head, but there is definitely a commenter on this series who begged me to put Gazelle on the team. And I didn't do it because... Oh, he missed! Ah, oh, he missed! The Fiend Hand has been beaten, but it didn't matter anyway. Yeah, but um, there's definitely somebody who wanted to see Gazelle on my team and asked me to do it, but I didn't because I wanted to put Aphrodite on instead, and I didn't feel the need to have two people from Fire Dragon, especially someone who represents Inazuma 11 Blizzard when my preference is Firestorm, while Torch I've used in a previous playthrough, so that was just for the sakes of repetition. Instead, we've got Pants, and I think that's a better player to have than than Gazelle, if you ask me. But at least now, in this optional episode, you have seen Northern Impact score a pretend goal against uh, my Darren, which only missed because, I don't know, plot armor. Oh yeah, I have the Absolute Knights now, which we unlocked by beating England. So fair enough. I'll be taking that ball from you now. I <laughs> hope you enjoyed owning it. I'm trying to pad out the timer so that I can use another special tactic. Fair enough, I don't need to anymore because, I oops, I missed. And that is full time with Diamond Dust. I took the time to get a 5-0 scoreline, even though you can't get an S rank experience bonus because this isn't actually part of a competition route. But regardless, I did it anyway. So, I at least got the Dawn on Xavier! What? Well, here I was saying I wasn't going to show prominence. I am at least going to show a little bit of it, because for beating an Alias Academy team, we have got the Alias Captain's best move. You will not burn me to ashes even though you got me over 4,000 views onto one video in the last Let's Play. Thanks for that prominence. I am going to send Xavier upon you and he is going to unleash the dawn and I'm so pleased he's got that because I literally had to give him Ganymede Ray just so he had some kind of shooting move he could level up. Because he gets Meteor Blade when it's V2 already, so you can only level it up one more time, and it does that quite quickly, unlike Fireball Storm. And then, yeah, you can't level up any more moves on Xavier until he finally learns the Dawn, much later into his level up moveset. But when you do have it, oh my, it's going to score all right. You can put it that way. I come to think of it. I'm going to check Xavier's level up moveset one more time, actually, because now that I think about it, maybe he's got one more move to learn. Which would take even longer to unlock, presumably. But it could do a god break and just not be present. Nope, he's got one more move to go, but we'll have to see that some other time. Um, I mean, I guess some fanboys and fangirls could get behind that. Inazuma 11 lesbian ship confirmed between prominence player and pants. Pants, you've only been on my episode for three, three episodes and you've already found yourself... A, a gay ship, but you know, 
<laughs> Torch is gonna go for Atomic Flare. So fair enough. Oh, Torch. You were meant to go for Atomic Flare and the ball went in the net. But he didn't get a goal. Um. Sure. This is weird. And they're doing perfect zone press, and they've actually got a bad and drop on some of their midfielders as well, so they've definitely borrowed some moves from Korean players. But anyway, <laughs> just like the Kirkwood, just when you think the match is over, it keeps going and going. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to stop the ball with Moog in the hand, and then now that Prominence is defeated, we're going to head for Alias Academy HQ. But I'm not sure what the best way to approach that will be, because obviously Alias Academy HQ is a big labyrinth, long and not that fun, but it's got some treasure chests I insist upon having, so I must go there. But I don't think, considering I covered the area in full in my Inazuma 11 2 Let's Play, and that walkthrough still works as a way to get through it, Oh yeah, um, I need to use the, the warpy guy to get back to the beginning. I would say I'm just going to put the alias HQ in fast motion and cut back whenever it's an important treasure chest and stuff. Because you don't need to sit through alias academy HQ all over again. Despite the fact that somebody's been messing with the timelines because it's completely fine as though it was ne the self-destruct button was never activated can i use this yeah so who who would i be able to get from this then sandwich sandwich ah the puns in this game are off the chart and he emerges out of the villainous zone but um I wonder if I could use this to actually recruit some alias players, but it's possible that only works in the after game. I can say something which I forgot to mention before. Team D, the failed Italian representative, you can actually recruit their players right now and put them on your squad if you so choose, but my team is basically complete. So anyway, I'm going to hop into the alias HQ, go super fast motion, and I'll be back when I get some kind of worthwhile treasure chest. the guys you get in random encounters I'm literally playing against Dvalin's advanced epsilon form and all of these guys are advanced epsilon designs and I think I actually remember now my previous trip to Fuji Forest of uh, the alias HQ I think each different floor has different alias teams on it, which is a very, very nice touch for something they only put in Team Ogre Attacks. So, um, hmm, suddenly, random encounters seem worth showing, but the rest of the actual area does not. This time it's prominence players that I'm playing against. And again, I'm just going to use the Dawn to eliminate them altogether. But yeah, so it seems like floor what? Oh wait, no. I've realized why prominence are appearing now. I briefly went up to the second floor to open up a treasure chest. You couldn't explore the rest of the floor, but there was a chest with Cosmic Blast in it. The shot which I already gave to Jordan because it was already included in a treasure chest before in this game. But, um, yeah, so I guess Prominence and Diamond Dust are the second floor encounters.
Now this is the door where Coach Lena burnt her fingers trying to rescue us, proving that she was indeed someone that we could trust in the end, because up here is the alias crystal, and here it's also definitive proof that clearly the timeline's still busted because the alias crystal is quite clearly still here, but most importantly, behind it is possibly my favourite defensive move in the game. From the moment I recruited Katar's Scylla for my team, I knew I was giving him this move because I gave it to Syed Armand in my previous playthrough of Team Over Attacks. You are absolutely having Planet Shield. I love it to pieces. Aha! Now on the third floor, it's the Alias Aces. This is a team purely of Alias Academy captains. And Dvalin is in his goal where he belongs to be. Let's use Cosmic Blast because I haven't actually done so yet. It's a brand new move that I found in a treasure chest. Part of Janus's move set, so I thought it should be part of Jordan's. And it's going to score on Dvalin, which... I'm sure that by defeating these alias players, you can presumably get them out of the out of the lottery machine at the start of the place. I should probably give that a go. Oh, I could have sworn there was a fourth floor to this place. Maybe they've um, audited it a little bit, made it slightly smaller. But look who's waiting for us here. That's right, as if we hadn't faced prominence and diamond dust enough. Pathfinder Peter, I do not require your services because, that's right, we even get to take on chaos in Inazuma 11-3 Team Ogre attacked. What a treat. It's not Genesis or anything like that, but you can still fight most of the Genesis players in random encounters here, to be fair. So again, I don't need to show off Chaos in full because I already covered them in the last Let's Play in one of my most popular videos ever, but they're level 54, which is so so good, and yeah, <laughs> I'm going to have to try and not lose to them. I don't know what level my players are, but it's probably not 54. What we're saying is, yeah, if you want my full thoughts on Chaos and whatnot, then you're better off referring to the actual video I made in the Inazuma 2 Let's Play where I take on Chaos. But they're here as well. To, for me to try and defeat them with Chaos Break, maybe? To be honest, I think I'm a little too low level for Aphrodite's shot to go in. But not the canonical Aphrodite, Sean, Axel version of the move, which I used before. But at least it is Chaos Break, and it's gone in. Okay, so Chaos are beatable. That's a relief. For the record, just while I'm switching my players around, yeah, it seems my players are generally in the low 40s when it comes to levels, but nonetheless, I was able to uh, put up a good fight anyway. But I think I would like to commentate the second half for Chaos, even though this is probably a really long video. It would feel wrong not to talk over Chaos when I did talk over Diamond Dust way back earlier at the start of the episode, but the playing this match just reminds me of how much I enjoy playing in Azuma 11 too, because I really do think it's great. But also, when I started this Let's Play, I wanted to use it to try and decide for myself which game I truly preferred out of Inazuma 11 2 and 3, because they're so close. Inazuma 2 
carries a lot more nostalgia to me, whereas when I started in Azuma 3, I was actually really distracted by Pokemon Y. I was playing that more than I was playing Bomb Blast. But over the years, I've just come to love Inazuma 3 more and more. I held the capsule system against it, and why can you catch the dawn in your hands when you, could, when you couldn't save Chaos Break with Burnout? That doesn't make sense. But we're already winning anyway, so I'm not too concerned. But, yeah, I kind of think... I used to say Inazuma 2 was my slight preference out of the two games due to better recruitment and personal nostalgia, but throughout the process of doing this Let's Play, I think I've made up my mind, even before I've even finished the game, I think I've decided that I just narrowly prefer Inazuma 11 3 as a game, which would make it my favourite Inazuma 11 game overall. Now believe me, when we get to Inazuma 11 Go Chrono Stones on this channel, you will see a single single player experience which again rivals this game for the best. I love Chrono Stones so much, but it has other flaws which stop it from being a contender for my favourite. We'll get to that later. First we've got to get through Inazuma 11 Go 1, and before that we've got to finish the Inazuma 11 3 Team Ogre Attacks LP, and before we can do that we've got to beat Chaos, because they're no, you know, trifling matter. They're still very much out leveling us and they might be about to go for a shot, but if that's a chance to see Fire Blizzard then I don't mind, or it's a chance to see Planet Shield! This is so funny! <laughs> Sayed Armand on my previous playthrough, he's not even meant to be a defender, but I gave him that move and boy did he become one. And I'm so pleased that Scylla can have it as well because it's just too hilarious. And yet Genesis actually has that as a move. With complete seriousness, that is a Genesis defensive move. But now it's mine, and Qatar can crush the people below it. I mean, he, he's Japanese, of course he is. So is Pants. And Pants is also definitely a male, because women aren't allowed in the FFI, so we have to pretend that to use her Japanese name. Pantsu is a boy from Japan. <laughs> That's why Tori and Sue can't be on the team, but we've just casually overwritten that. That is a thing in this game. None of the candidates are women because it's against the rules, but you can still put women on the team if you really want to, which I did. But that was the match against Chaos. They have the special tactic fast forward, just like Diamond Dust and Prominence, but just let them use it. If they try to use a special tactic, just allow them because fast forward makes the match end faster. That's a 4-0 victory for us. We defeated Chaos, having explored Alias HQ. And they don't have anything to say about it, like, but... So that's going to be it for this hopefully not too long episode. I hope you enjoyed the past two, where we just did some... Past three, really, where we've just been doing side questy excursions, but... It was a lot of Team Ogre Attacks exclusive content, and I found this a lot of fun to record, so I hope you found it fun to watch. I'm just going to do a couple of tokens, and then we're going to call this off, because I'm hoping there's alias players to be found. Now, I've recruited a bunch more players from the Fuji Forest, including this guy who was actually the one who used utter gutsiness catch against me. But I can't find any alias players. Maybe they're here, maybe they're not. I don't know, let me know in the comments. But thanks for watching. See you in the next episode where we get back on with the main story. Ta-ra!